Want to know how Canada's top industry leaders feel about creating significant wealth in the world around them? Find out with me, Thane Stenner, founder of Stenner Wealth Partners at Canaccord Genuity and host of the new Smart Wealth Podcast. Available on iHeart or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Subscribe now. Hello, everybody. I'm Thane Stenner, host of the BNN Bloomberg Brand Studio Smart Wealth Podcast, where I get to interview pioneers from various industries and hear their wealth creation story. Uh, lessons learned along the way, and tips they wish to share. So it's not your typical news interview. My goal with the Smart Wealth Podcast, which comes out monthly, is to have an authentic personal conversation with some amazingly successful people who have already accomplished much in their careers and have lots more still to do. My special guest today, on February 16, 2022, is Dr. Hazmik Patel, or Doc, as he likes to be called by his friends and colleagues. I've had the distinct pleasure to get to know Doc and his family uh, uh, over the last six and a half years. And he's uh, an amazing leader for his company and for his family. Doc is the CEO and co-founder of Age Care. He was born and brought up in Kenya by his parents who immigrated to Kenya from India. Uh, in his teens, Doc was sent to attend high school in London, England. He graduated from the Aberdeen University Medical School in 1982. Uh, and following his family practice residency in England, Doc moved with his wife and two young sons to Canada in 1987. So a real immigrant success story is what we're going to be talking about here today. One of his responsibilities as a practicing family doctor was to attend to his patients while who were in nursing homes in the Alberta region. It was during this time that he observed two things. One, that the nursing homes were built in the 1960s and 70s, and they're very institutional, poorly maintained, and a depressing place to be in. Secondly, there was a shortage of nursing home beds. So seniors were staying longer than they needed to in the hospital beds, which is not ideal circumstances for them, especially from a doctor's perspective. So this was the nucleus of the idea for Doc and his business partner to build a new modern residential looking nursing home. So Doc recognized in the need to improve the quality of long-term care facilities and clinical care for seniors in Alberta. And after convincing the local health region in Medicine Hat, Alberta, he was awarded, awarded a contract to design, build, and operate an 86 bed nursing home in 1998. So this was the beginning or genesis of Age Care, uh, his company that uh, built out uh, this particular portfolio of, of uh, nursing facilities, care facilities. Age Care has grown to 15 facilities across Canada, Western Canada, operating just under 3,000 beds today. Age Care employs over 3,100 staff and remained mostly a family business owned and operated by the two founders until 2019, when uh, a private equity fund called Axiom Infrastructure Fund based out of Quebec uh, approached and acquired a majority equity partnership in aged care. Now, Doc and his business partner today still own uh, a portion of the, of the overall company and are continuing to operate the businesses today. Doc has many interests, uh, including outdoor activities. He's summited Mount Kilimanjaro and done the Machu, Machu Picchu uh, hike in Peru. He also enjoys golf, traveling, and reading, uh, as well as He's a lifelong learner, including his Oxford uh, executive uh, MBA that he took uh, a number of years ago. So, Doc, thanks for joining me and our listeners here today on February 16, 2022. Thank you, Thane. You're welcome. So, you know, we've got, you know, a certain format to this type of podcast, but uh, I think the first question I really would like to ask you is, in the sector of the business that you operate, what has it been like to run a seniors facility company during two years of a pandemic, a COVID pandemic? 
Well, Thane, as you know, the COVID pandemic impacted many industries and none more than uh, seniors' long-term care facilities. Um, we saw a large number of COVID outbreaks uh, in our facilities over the past two years and impacted many residents and staff. This was a, a very difficult and challenging times for operators. You know, none of us had any experience or training to manage a pand pandemic of this uh, magnitude. So you're kind of learning on the fly. Mm. Yeah, you, we were creating and implementing new policies and procedures on a daily basis. And I think that one of the biggest challenge we had was having enough staff to provide the services. We are in a service industry and we needed people to provide uh, services. We could lose 10, 20% of our staff for a shift that was going to begin in a few hours. By the end of the pandemic, the staff were so exhausted and unfortunately, unappreciated by public at large. A lot of undeserved blame was directed at the operators. I'm just hopeful that, you know, we're all stronger from the experience of the past two years as operators, as managers, but really it was a big, big challenge for us. Yeah, you're basically, you're on your, your staff and you were on the front lines uh, and having to pit uh, frequently and to changing rules and guidelines. Uh, uh, it's absolutely remarkable what you've been able to accomplish uh, and you and your team so far. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, shift to, you know, 36,000 foot view, and then we're going to go down to some questions uh, more on the personal point. But, you know, what stands out so far in your life, Doc? What stands out so far as a defining moment in your life where you kind of... Uh, feel like you just some moments that really changed you or affected you. So why don't we begin there? A small question. So, you know, when you think about, about uh, accomplishment as a family, you, know, you think how you've lived your life. And as a family, we've tried to live our life with some core principles and, and values. You know, things like the importance of education, being kind and respectful to others, family, work ethic, you know, having a purpose in life. And I think, you know, bringing up a young family without an extended family support in a culturally different environment was never easy. And to have been able to instill the same principles and values to my family, to my next generation, is something I think uh, uh, we are very proud of. Hmm. Well, I've met your family before on a number of occasions and uh, uh, the legacy you're leaving, uh, Doc, uh, and instilling in them has been pretty amazing to watch and see. So um, uh, thank you for that. Um, you know, as a business person, um, a very successful one, you know, you've had the blessings, I guess, of, of um, uh, building up a certain level of, you know, personal wealth or family wealth. Um, a lot of times th people think that, uh, you know, building up uh, that wealth kind of, fulfills fulfills you how would you say that gaining wealth through business ownership over time has affected you and your family and maybe what do you think or relate to money today versus what you were thinking 20 years ago how you think of money and wealth i think to some extent depends on whether you grew up with money or not you know, my memory growing up was that we did not have much money. So really <laughs> making money when I grew up was always an ambition. Um, so, you know, I started my professional career working as a physician in a very small community uh, in, in, uh, in rural Alberta. And in those early years, you know, as a physician, I was making decent money. 
and all you think about is really providing for the family, uh, you know, think about mortgage payments, uh, children's uh, higher education when they grow up, and really save for retirement. It's kind of a means to an end. Having achieved a bit of financial independence, I do think of money slightly differently. You know, I'm at a stage where I think more about wealth preservation, generational transfer of wealth. And I think this comes from the fact that I did not have much money growing up, right? So I, I want to preserve what we've been blessed to have created. I also, I'm also trying to use the wealth for a broader impact. And I've created an endowment scholarship uh, at the Side Business School at Oxford University in the UK for MBA students uh, from Africa. Mm. My background was Africa, so this scholarship, and it's an endowment scholarship, is for students from Africa for an MBA program at Oxford. Mm. Excellent. Um, so, you know, as far as activities today, would you say, what's bringing you the most joy um, or enjoyment today in your life? And I see you smile right away when you say that. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, you know, I have to admit, you know, my, I spend most of my time working. I enjoy my work. I'm excited about work. You know, we have, we have a five-year growth plan right now through M&A and new development with our new partners. Uh, well, you know, I wake up every morning very excited to go to work. Mm. So work is a big part of my enjoyment. Yeah. But outside work, obviously, you know, family's always been very important to me. And I'm very fortunate. I have uh, four uh, grandchildren. And I spend a lot of my time with them. I see them grow and develop different personalities. So that is always fun. Hmm. And uh, I enjoy golf. I enjoy traveling. And I, I love to read. Hmm. Fantastic. So, um, you know, shifting to, you know, every successful uh, business owner, entrepreneur that I know of has gone through various challenges. Um, and I don't want to speak for you here, but what would you say have been some of the biggest uh, life and work challenges that you've learned the most from so far? I think lessons that stick are personal experiences that one goes through. Uh, my father, uh, as you mentioned in the introduction, uh, was a first uh, generational immigrant to, to, to Kenya. And he did not have formal education, but he was very ambitious and a, and a self-taught man. So when he was in his late 30s, he started a business. And that business gradually, you know, he built it up and became quite successful. However, in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, things went sideways for him and his business. And in a short spell of time, he, he lost everything he had built. Mm. So this was very tough on the family. And that experience, I, was, I remember I was at my first or second year university when all this started to happen. The experience taught me some basic principles of running a family business. And you know, these are, when I look back at what he did, I think it was, he was unaware of the external environment. You know, mm -hmm. uh, didn't pay attention to what was going around him. Uh, he doubled down when a project failed. So the next project was bigger than the last one, which failed. So he's doubling down. You know, he's not able to assess risk and mitigate uh, strategy. So those are the stuff that sticks in my head <laughs> as a family yeah. business operator. Learned from, I've learned from that, those mistakes of his. And you know, lastly, I think uh, he never seeked, uh, he never seeked expert advice when things were not going his way. Mm. So I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, external consultants and advisors that we can tap into uh, 
in, in this country. And that's a lesson for us. For me. Oh, fantastic. Well, let's pause there. And after the break, we'll get into uh, some further questions in regards to um, just investment ideas, areas of focus of what you're doing now with age care and whatnot. So we'll take a quick break. Uh, everybody listen up after, just one moment. Want to know how Canada's top industry leaders feel about creating significant wealth in the world around them? Find out with me, Thane Stenner, founder of Center Wealth Partners at Canaccord Genuity and host of the new Smart Wealth Podcast. Available on iHeart or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Subscribe now. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm with uh, Doc Patel, who's based in Calgary on uh, February 16, 2022. And we're into the next segment here. So, Doc, I mean, from point of view of allocating capital today as a successful investor and, and business owner, what sort of segments uh, do you think you would be wanting to deploy capital to at this point, going ahead the next five, 10 years and longer? Yeah. All I know is, uh, is healthcare and real estate. And I think, uh, I think these two sectors uh, will continue to be relevant over the next uh, 30, 40 years. Uh, Sony Weiss once said to me, invest in what you know and understand. So given the demographics and the senior care business, uh, I think is a good asset to invest in. So that will be my focus is to stay in, uh, in the stuff that I know. Mm -hmm. now, we have seen technology have impact in many industries and it will have impact in, on, on healthcare as well as real estate. And I think this is one area that I will need to uh, learn and better understand if I'm going to stay in these sectors. Excellent. Thank you. So, you know, you're a minority in, owner of a you know, substantially growing uh, portfolio of, of care facilities and, and retirement facilities. So what's kind of the uh, vision or the plan over the next five, 10 years with, with that? I think, uh, I think our vision is to grow and we've started to go down that path of growth through acquisition and new development. Um, despite the challenges of COVID over the past two years, we are seeing a number of uh, senior care assets on the market for transaction. Something that we did not see pre-COVID. And uh, I'm quite certain it's, uh, it's because of the impact of COVID on the, on the, on the sector. Hmm. So I think we are in a good position. We would like to grow and uh, we are seeing these transactions uh, uh, on the table. So Doc, I mean, you're in the healthcare business, you're in real estate with aged care. How do interest rates kind of affect your business model and how do you think about them? on a go forward basis, given that interest rates have started to go up now? So as you know, in the, with, with rising interest rates, uh, it has an impact on our cap rates. That's how we evaluate uh, senior care business. So as the interest rates go up, the cap rate goes up. Uh, so the valuation uh, goes down. So as a purchaser, it's a good time to be acquiring. Um, however, uh, uh, high interest rates obviously has a cost impact on operations. Um, for our business model, what we like is long-term cash flow stability. And we try and do that by mitigating the interest rate risk by locking in the interest rate over long-term. And when I talk about long-term, it's 20 or 30 year term. So we try and get a fixed interest rate for 20 or 30 years. And obviously the commercial banks uh, are not uh, permitted or, or, or do it. So our typical lending institu institution tends to be uh, the life course of the world. So mm -hmm. we've already, we, uh, for the last five, six years, we've uh, used them as our key lender. So you mentioned kind of expansion and acquisition earlier. Are you are you expanding just in Western Canada or are you uh, pursuing other opportunities in Eastern Canada? No, our, our, our goal is to expand across the country. 
Well, a very interesting perspectives, Doc. And uh, we're going to come back for our final segment here shortly. And uh, please uh, wait with me. And it'll be fun to kind of wrap up this interview with Doc Patel. Thank you. Want to know how Canada's top industry leaders feel about creating significant wealth in the world around them? Find out with me, Thane Stenner, founder of Center Wealth Partners at Canaccord Genuity and host of the new Smart Wealth Podcast. Available on iHeart or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Subscribe now. Welcome back and uh, thanks, Doc, for uh, some of the, your, your answers to my questions so far in this podcast. We're getting down to uh, closing, closing out this interview. So, you know, specifically as a business person, I just, I would love for you to share with our audience, what are some, just some of the key things that you've learned as a business person, you know, a couple of things to definitely focus on and a couple of things to avoid. What would you say? I think uh, as, a, as a business person and as a business leader, I think honesty would be my first uh, attribute. Honesty, um, respect of your coworkers, humility. I think we are what we are because of people around us. Um, and I think in terms of model, business model, not to over leverage. Mm. I think uh, we don't know what's around the corner. We've seen that with pandemic. So I think uh, uh, making sure that you're not over leveraged. So two last questions for you, Doc. Um, one would be, what's one or two things about you that um, people wouldn't necessarily know about you? Or put another way, what would your wife say that's unique about you. <laughs> well, a couple of things that people don't know about me, I think. One is that I am claustrophobic. I hmm. try and avoid taking elevators. <laughs> so I, I go up and downstairs. Uh, so I'm afraid of heights. Despite having climbed Kilimanjaro, I am afraid of heights. Wow, interesting. And not many people know that. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of these care facilities are... They're shorter buildings, I take it. Oh, I'm, I'm skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So one last question for you. You're, you know, I, I know uh, your mother recently passed away in India and you went back and this interview was actually delayed because of her passing, which I'm, I send my condolences to you on. What do you think she'd be most proud of you about as her son? It's a, it's a good question because I asked her the question uh, about two years ago. And her answer was that I employ a lot of people. And, and she said to me, she's most proud because I employ over at that time about 2,500 staff. So she said to me, think about, you're actually supporting 2,500 families. Mm. So mm. that's what she was most proud about is the support that I'm offering to families. Today, mm. we actually have 4,000 staff. So if I translate that, we are supporting 4,000 families. Wow. No responsibility, eh, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, listen, uh, I want, really want to thank you, uh, Doc, for your time today. I know you're very busy uh, these days and you've had a lot on your plate, but uh, been a most insightful interview and I, I really appreciate that. So thank you very much. And um, so for everybody listening, that was Doc, uh, or Dr. Hesmik Patel, CEO and co-founder of Age Care. Our next episode, I'll be chatting with Michael Lee Chin, a Jamaican Canadian billionaire businessman and philanthropist and the chairman and CEO of Portland Holdings Inc., a privately held investment company in Ontario, Canada. So stay tuned for that. I'm Dane Stinner, and thanks for listening to Smart Wealth.
The comments expressed in this podcast are the results of work done by Stenner Wealth Partners. They may differ from the opinion of Canaccord Genuity Corp. and should not be considered as representative of Canaccord's beliefs, opinions, or recommendations. All views expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities. The statements expressed herein are not intended to provide tax, legal, or financial advice and under no circumstances should be construed as a solicitation to act as a securities broker or dealer in any jurisdiction. All views are intended for general circulation only and do not have any regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or general needs of any particular person, organization, or institution. Canaccord is a member of the CIPF.